John Hickok here. Today we're going to take a look at the Model JHP 45 ACP High Point, the infamous infamous High Point. Everyone knows, should know what the High Point is and all that entails with the High Point. Um, it works, pretty reliable, um, affordable. It's not as bad as you think it is, but that's still very bad. But we're going to shoot it first and then I'm going to elaborate. Two liter, wait, stop sign, always stop, start, always start on the stop sign. All right, more mags. Got nine rounds in the magazine. <laughs> didn't end on a great note there no pun intended but as you can see it shoots and uh, that's one of the uh, the things that I have to say that's positive about this about this thing but well, first before we get into all that um, and uh, this beautiful day to look at this high point it's a uh, it's an interesting firearm it's uh, it's iconic it's infamous it's talked about a lot on the internet and the reason that it's so infamous is a, a, revolves around one very important factor, the most important factor of the high point pistols, and that is the cost, the price. Um, this is a 45 ACP semi-automatic polymer frame, some might say plastic frame, especially with the uh, high point uh, pistol that is $150 roughly. Um, I think I've seen them on buds for 100, like $155, $160 on buds. Um, and you know, that's typically a price you can find them for. Uh, around $150, bucks, $160, bucks, $175, you know, under $200 easily. And, uh, and that's brand new on the used market, you know, quite possibly even cheaper. Because um, there's a lot of people who uh, buy these and then sell them on the used market for some reasons I'm going to get into. So, not even sure where to start to be honest. There's a, you know, these high point videos, uh, videos on high points end up being almost more philosophical, I feel like, than technical, um, because you know it's not a very technical gun. That that's the whole deal. It's a it's a cheap, inexpensive gun. I mean, basically, run through kind of some of the stuff that you get. You have a rail on this one, um, so that you can blind people so they don't know that you have a high point. Which is, uh, which is good. And um, you've got safety, slide lock, safe, fire, lock the slide back. Um, it's a cast pop metal uh, slide, as you can see. I mean, just look at the metal, it looks rough. You know, uh, you get what you pay for in, in, that, in that sense. But again, it's not a part that has a lot of pressure on it. So, you know, it doesn't need to be uh, some kind of hot shot space age steel necessarily. Uh, the barrel, of course, is in the chamber and all that is made out of good, good steel and everything. Polymer frame, grip. Um, you know, you get a trigger that's got a magazine disconnect, but you get a trigger that is not great, um, but it's not terrible either. I mean, for for what it is, it's uh, it's really not that bad. It's it's pretty heavy. Uh, but it, it you can really tell where it's where it's gonna break pretty well um, it's, You know, I wouldn't call it crisp or anything, but it has that wall, you know, where it doesn't have a lot of creep in it Which is kind of kind of nice um, and uh, What else uh, you got adjustable rear sight there and uh, Pretty pretty nice sights, you know, of course, they're you know, they're cheap They might break or something like that, but you get a nice a nice sight picture so that's, that's some of the features that, that you kind of buy into for 150 bucks with, with this pistol. Of course, single stack magazine, uh, nine rounds in the magazine. But now the problem is um, it's very big and uh, very heavy. It's, it's a very heavy gun. Uh, people, you know, it's like, a, it's, it's like all the good parts 
it's like all the bad parts of a Desert Eagle, but none of the good parts. Uh, that's that's the problem. It's like carrying a Desert Eagle that shoots 45 ACP, um, and and that's the big problem with these. And and again, that's why you get what you pay for. Um, but what you do get is a reliable firearm that's affordable that will shoot, and it will do what you need it to do for the most part. It's just very big and heavy. It's going to be hard to carry it concealed. Um, because of both the size and the and the weight, and you have a single stack magazine. Where normally with a pistol this size, um, like this is a Glock 20, for example, but it's the same size as the Glock 21, which is in 45 ACP. This one's 10 millimeter, of course. Uh, with a pistol, you know, the same size, uh, smaller, <laughs> actually, actually a fair amount smaller. Um, you get 13 plus one rounds instead of nine plus one. And you know, even this, even a pistol this size would be pretty difficult to conceal carry. Uh, but it, but it can be done, and, and is done by people. I did it actually for a short period of time. I carried a Glock 21. It's doable where it's not that doable with this, and especially where you sacrifice so much uh, for just a few hundred uh, bucks less. So that's kind of a, in a nutshell, sort of the uh, the disadvantages of this thing. I got to get better at <laughs> talking while I reload. Um, so now one of the, the things that people will say when you criticize the high point, when you kind of, uh, and some people are less, are less friendly about outlining those, those criticisms that I am, you know, try to be nice about it. It's a, uh, there's, there's some really cool things about, about this gun, this pistol. Um, but one thing that people will say is they will accuse you of making fun of poor people because you're making fun of a cheap gun. And now it's fun to make fun of this gun. I mean, just look at it. It looks like a cordless drill or a, a hair dryer, uh, something you wouldn't want to be caught dead with, uh, which is kind of ironic saying, I guess, about a handgun. But um, it's relative to other other firearms, it looks ridiculous. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, it looks ridiculous. Look at these other pistols out here on the table. And Glocks are not known for being that good looking of guns. They're considered pretty ugly. Somehow the high point makes them look like, you know, some sort of hot shot uh, 1911. They look beautiful, like a work of art compared to this thing. I mean, it just looks, it looks terrible. But the looks of a gun like that, of course, are kind of irrelevant at that price point. But people will accuse you of making fun of poor people when you make fun of this gun when uh, your income level has nothing to do, I don't care if you make uh, $1 a year or a billion dollars a year, it has no bearing on how this gun looks to my eye and other people's eyes versus this firearm. It has nothing to do with how much money you make. Uh, but people will make that, that comparison for some reason. I mean, if, I'm, uh, if, I had, if I had no money and had no place to live and someone took me in and let me sleep in a gun shop and they let me at night handle all the guns and shoot them in the range, uh, if I uh, agreed to clean the floor or something, I would still make fun of this. I'd be like, what is this thing? Like, is it, how, is, how do people, <laughs> how does this pass off as a gun? It looks terrible. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter how much money you make. Um, there's a reason why people make fun of them. That's what I'm trying to say. But the uh, cool thing about them though, is that they work and that they are $150. Um, and there are people out there who just don't have the budget for a gun that costs more than that. They just don't, you know, the people, um, you, you can't, you can't assume to know everyone's situation in life. You know, we all are dealt a different, different hand of cards, you know, from birth or early on in our life. Um, and, and you know, uh, you just don't know what, what someone else has had to go through and for whatever reason, the fault of their own or someone else's, they might not be able to afford a gun beyond this, uh, beyond this, and the beauty of it is it does actually work. Even though it's big and heavy, and they might have a hard time carrying it, it works. It would, this would protect you. You could defend yourself with this firearm and protect your life with it. Um, as you saw earlier in the video, and I'm about to, to show you again, it tends to work pretty reliably. And it's not that hard, uh, much harder to hit stuff with this than it is other pistols. All right, let's try some stuff over on the other hill. Let's start off with the gong. I think I can hit it if I hold just below it. I think this thing shoots a little bit high. Okay. 
Hold it left. I have a tendency, I have a tendency to pull this thing a little bit left. So let's see if I can do a little better on this magazine. Now, one thing that this particular one does, you know, as I've talked about the reliability of these things, uh, when you're when you put a fresh mag in and you go to rack the first round, and sometimes the slide will hang up to the rear, and you got to give it a little shove in the back. But it's not a big deal, you know. I and mean, these are just big old tanks, basically. And um, that's one thing that makes them so reliable and so durable. But, but battery issues, going into battery, is something I have seen with, with high points that, that can be a problem. Okay, let's try again, see if I can do a little better. All right, I know it's a high point, but it'll still do it. Can't tell where they're going. So uh, let's try some something a little bit closer, like uh, that ram up there on the top, the top uh, left ram. I am all over the place with this thing over on the hill, which um, I'll take credit for that. It's it's probably mostly me. Now I know that I could pick up one of these and do better because I've done it lots and lots of times, but um, these are not target guns. These are durable, cheap, affordable guns that, that go bang, you know, that's what they're for. All right, let's load up some more. I might I might try it again. I might see, see if I can redeem myself. Um, so one, one aspect too of, of these guns being so affordable is it's a, it's kind of a great thing also for the Second Amendment because, you know, like I think a lot of people watching this video, our beliefs are that we want everyone who is an adult to have um, access to firearms to defend themselves. Um, and uh, we, we don't want people to be, uh, I don't know, uh, restricted in any way, whether it's legally or economically from having that ability so that's one thing that's neat about these affordable pistols like this that are reliable because there are some other pistols out there that are in this price range that are not reliable uh, you know i don't even i can't even remember the names just because they're so forgettable because hardly anyone buys them but but they're out there um and that's what's that's one reason that people hold these in in a higher regard than maybe you would think that they should because of just how ridiculous the thing looks um, is because of the fact that it puts more guns in people's hands, which I think across the board is a good thing. Um, this is the way I look at it. Uh, there's good people outnumber bad people by a massive percentage. So the more guns that people have, the more good people will have guns against the bad people because the bad people are going to get guns anyways. That's the way I look at it. So more people with guns, you uh, increase that ratio of good people having guns to bad people having guns. So I think cheap guns are a good thing if, as long as they're reliable. And this one seems to be. Now, one thing I will say on the reliability aspect of these things is I know that people have done a lot of tests with them and all kinds of crazy torture tests and uh and they're durable they're tough but i don't know if anyone has taken one and shot thousands of rounds through one and maybe they have and you guys in the comments can can tell me what you know about that or what you've seen i would think and this is strictly theoretical but i would think that you know a, uh you know a firearm that, that they can make for 150 dollars probably wouldn't hold up to lots and lots of rounds over a certain period of time. I'm just guessing, um, but that might be a weak point of the high point. I'm not sure. 
but typically a firearm like this um, if this is all you can afford you probably couldn't afford the ammo to even put that those kind of rounds through it in the first place uh, so probably probably not an issue I mean the, the whole deal with these things is just someone who wants a gun to protect themselves more than likely not concealed carry it could be done especially with the nine millimeter version that's a little smaller um, but not not easily but more likely someone's gonna buy this you know just put it in their house and uh, not shoot it very much and just feel better more comfortable having it you know in their home to protect themselves and they're not necessarily a gun person a lot of people who are not gun people would be buying these uh, to protect themselves basically and they're fairly easy to use if you're inexperienced you know, it doesn't have a lot of a lot of gadgets or gizmos on it. It's pretty straightforward. Put the mag in the bottom and you rack the slide and and pull the trigger and turn the safety off. Not in that order. Okay, let's, uh, let's try some close stuff again. Maybe I can figure out, I don't know, it seemed all over the place, so it's not me. I don't think this thing um, shoots off too far in any one direction or the other. All right. Let's take out this uh, blue two liter over here. With the green one. All right. Let's go ahead and shoot this target before I forget. Here we go. This will give me some idea of what I got going on here. I'm gonna really bear down and take my time and put some try to put some rounds in that red bullseye. Oh, look at that. Malfunction. After I talked it up so much. Now, this thing is a blowback and it takes, you know, hot ammo. Of course, you want to make sure you use hotter ammo um, for it to function more reliably. And it seems like an awful big coincidence that it happened to hang up when I was taking careful aim and trying to hold the gun as steady as possible, which when I'm doing that, I tend to not have as tight of a grip on the pistol. So that, that could be why it happened. But still, these things have an incredible reputation for reliability. It might be a little bit overrated because people are so surprised that they are reliable for the, for the price. But, you know, it shows you it's not, it's not perfect, you know. It's okay. Rack this, get this thing cleared out. There we go. Okay, so on the paper, you know, not not terrible, not not uh, amazing or anything, but for some reason over there couldn't make it happen. I forgot to get to the mag. Okay, I'm gonna shoot a few more close things, and then I'm gonna load up uh, at least two or three more magazines. We're gonna shoot that watermelon, and then we're gonna we're gonna try over there again, and then that'll be about it. And again, if you see me hitting the back of that, that's because it's, you know, it's hanging up a little bit back there. I'm not just doing that for fun or anything. Oh, we got some pots here. Okay. So, you know, I don't mean to make fun of this thing. Uh, you know, I'm trying to be as fair as possible about it, but, you know, in a nutshell, it, it's very reliable for the price. Um, it's affordable, of course, around 150 bucks, which is amazing. You know, there's there's a lot of holster. It might be a, it might buy a holster for a gun that costs more than that, you know. Um, surely not if you, I wonder, if the, I wonder what the most expensive high point holster is. That would be interesting to know. I wonder if anyone makes a, uh, a holster that costs more than the, than the pistol. But, you know, those are the two big pluses of this thing. Cheap and reliable. And the big disadvantages, heavy, large, 
low capacity. You know, and then obviously there's some other features that you might want on a pistol that you don't have, like ambi, you know, different things like that. Um, and one thing too that I'll add is if you, if all you can afford is a high point, it's a way for you to buy a gun, which is amazing. That is, that is a, such a great, great thing. And I'm glad that there is a pistol that exists that is that cheap and that is known to be that reliable. It's, that's super important. But I will say that if you are willing to spend just a little bit more money for something like this, for example, and there's several guns in this category, it's just one that we had, the LC9S, for just an extra 150 bucks, sounds like an infomercial, Call now for $150 for an extra $150 bucks, twice the money of what a typical high point costs, you're getting into like four times the gun. You know, now most of these are gonna be a nine millimeter and not a 45, but I would argue that you're better off with a higher quality uh, pistol in a smaller caliber. Uh, you're better off to, to just to get one of these low end um, lower end uh, like single stack nine millimeter pistols you can find a lot of them for 250 even some of them uh 300 bucks especially on, on the used market um you know if, if you can you're better off to go that route because you're talking about getting like almost four times the amount of gun in a lot of ways that you can with this because it gives you the ability to be able to carry it much easier and you know, i would just trust something like this more than something like this even though these are known to be pretty reliable um i just know more has gone into design this gun and also um it, you know there's it comes with less shame that's also a good thing <laughs> that's a plus um, i will say the 45 model the high point has a little bit less shame associated with it because it is a 45 you know so they can only make fun of you so much if you have the 45 and especially the 10 millimeter version too which we'll have to get one of those sometime and do a video um but yeah, you, for just a little more money, another 100, 200 bucks, I mean, you're, you're talking about like four times the gun, you know, and and then it kind of exponentially decreases after that. Like I would say from a $150 gun to a $300 gun, you're talking about like four times the gun for 300 bucks. From a $300 gun to like a $600 gun, you're talking about maybe twice the gun possibly, and that could even be debatable. And then from a $600 gun to a $1,200 gun, you know, you're not, you're talking about maybe an extra 30% and then, you know, kind of exponentially goes down. So even from like a $2,000 gun to a $4,000 gun, the, you're, the difference that you're going to notice is going to be very small. I mean, that difference costs a lot of money. Um, but at these lower levels of firearms, you're talking about a few hundred bucks. I mean, it doesn't take much to get you into a much nicer, nicer pistol. Um, so if, if you're buying a high point and you can afford something like a, LC9 or a, a Glock 43 or or some of these other guns, then I think probably you made the wrong move. Um, the high point is for people to buy ironically or if it's the only gun that you can't afford at the time and you just need something that shoots, you know, that's what this gun is for. So an ironic purchase is a great reason to buy a high point. I actually bought, got this, didn't buy this. I got this as an ironic birthday present of all things. Which, uh, you know your life is going well when you get a gun and it's an ironic gift. It's a joke. Like, oh, I got a gun for my birthday and it's a, like a joke gun. You know, like how ridiculous is that? But awesome at the same time. And I'll bet you can guess who got it for me. Um, it's a guy. You might know him. He's uh, referred to as the old guy. Uh, where's the old guy a lot in the comment section of these videos. The ones that I'm in especially. I think you've heard of him before. I don't know. It, you know who it is? The guy behind the camera? Uh, I've heard of him. Yeah. I forget his name, but... He's, he's just old for his height. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. Last round of shooting. Let's start this first mag off. On uh, Let's go ahead and start off over there because I want to end on a positive note. And that may not be very positive over there, but, but I just got to try it again. Okay. All right, we'll just go to the gong, and I'm, I'm going to intentionally aim low so I can at least see where the misses are, uh, because if the misses are going up into all that uh, junk up there, I can't tell where it's going. Okay. There we go. All right, well, not off to a good start. Didn't have a round in it. Look at that.
look at that. I redeemed myself a little bit. <laughs> it still wasn't great, but you know. So it was it was all me. You know, I just needed to calm down, take my time. And uh, so, you know, most cases, the pistol will do it. It's like that has been uh, beaten into you guys' heads for years. Okay. Uh, let's just shoot some close stuff, and then we'll take out that watermelon with the last magazine. All right. Red two liter. That was cool. Okay, watermelon time. Look at that. Ah, I love it. And this thing's pretty fun to shoot. You know, that's one thing I guess I didn't say yet. I mean. It's uh, light recoiling because of that big old heavy slide and um, not the best trigger, but not terrible. Um, just fun to shoot. It's comfortable to shoot. It's it's fun, ironically. You know, those of us who are like real gun guys, you know, that's one reason we make fun of it and maybe more than we should because uh, we're so used to all these other guns and, uh, and really nice guns or collectible guns or, or whatever. And um, it just seems kind of silly. And, and so it's kind of a novelty to get out here and, and shoot one for me, at least. Um, but yeah, not a, not a terrible gun. It's in the grand scheme of things with other handguns for getting the price, it's pretty bad. It's a pretty terrible gun. But when you think about the price and other options out there at, at that price point, it's kind of impressive what it does. It, it really is. I'm kind of impressed with it. Uh, when you really put it in the correct context, it's, a, it's an impressive piece of machinery. But all right, I hope that you got something out of that that you wanted. Maybe a few things that you didn't want that I wanted you to have. Um, and you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys next time. to do that okay since you guys are here at the end of the video i want to remind you of our friends over at sdi the sonoran desert institute they're a fully accredited online distance learning program where you become certified in gunsmithing uh, or get an associate's degree in firearms technology it's sdi.edu and also a uh, big announcement lately on the channel our shirts are now with uh, matt from demolition ranch's new company bunker branding so you can find shirts like this and many others over at uh, bunkerbranding.com slash 45 or just go uh, into the description and look for the link. And also you can go to our website and find that stuff and more things like Hickok, or our website is called hickok45.com. And you can also find our uh, Twitter, which is hickok45, Facebook, hickok45, uh, the real hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, there's a hickok45 and son YouTube channel. There's a John underscore hickok45. Instagram. Our videos are also on full30.com. And uh, also those of you who have been asking us to become a Patreon member, you can also find the link to that in the description. And we appreciate all those people, of course. And basically anything that you need to know is uh, probably going to be on the website somewhere. So we try to keep it easy for you guys. You know, there's no excuses because we know you're already on the internet. If you're looking at this, you're probably on the internet. So all you got to do is open your browser. And if you're on your TV, I know you got a phone in your pocket. So no excuses. All right. Uh, okay, now what you should do is uh, watch one of these other other videos, as long as it's one of ours, because everything else is uh, is not good, of course. All right. Thank you.